Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about GPG for Win or GPG uh, in Windows. We're going to be doing some encryption and file signing uh, in Windows systems. So we've already talked before about how to use GPG in Linux, uh, but today we're going to be using it in, in Windows. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is actually go and download GPG for Win and you can go to gpg4win.org. Um, that's where you can see this big green button that says download. Uh, the current version is 303. Um, so that's what I have here. So after you download the installer and install like normal, um, one of the tools that uh, come with GPG for Win is called Cleopatra, and it has this kind of red haired icon. Um, if you click on it, if you open it up, it looks something like this. Um, if you want to use command line, I'll show you a little bit about command line today. Um, let's go ahead and open command line. If you do CMD and press enter, um, then you get this black screen. And if you type GPG dash dash help, GP GPG dash dash help, then you should get a help menu from the command line. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, I won't do command line right now. The commands are exactly the same as in Linux or OS X. Uh, if you're using it from the command line, uh, I'm going to mostly focus on Cleopatra and the GUI interface. Okay, so once we install Cleopatra, if you don't already have certificates created, and you probably don't if this is the first time you've um, been using it, um, then you need to generate a new certificate or a new key pair. Um, if you do happen to have your keys, you can go ahead and import your public and private key. But we want to create a new key pair. So we can either go to File and New Key Pair or click on this New Key Pair button uh, on the front page. So then whenever you're generating a new key pair, you need to enter your information as accurately as, as possible. Um, and I'm just making a test one that I'm not going to use. So I'm going to put the email as test at test.com. If this is your real... Um, uh, key, make sure you use your, your real information. Um, that way people can find you and you can use it with your email. Um, no, so once you enter your name and email address, go to advanced settings. And by default, it uses RSA, uh, to, uh, 2048 bit. Um, we are going to bump that up to 4096 bit, um, which just makes it a little bit stronger. Um, you could also potentially use uh, either DSA or ECDSA, and this is basically the elliptic curve um, uh, uh, functions. Um, the problem with elliptic curve is that not all applications support elliptic curve yet. A lot of them are starting to, but um, you might generate a key that isn't very widely supported. So RSA 4096 is fairly secure and well supported, so that's what we're going to use now. Uh, certificate usage, we're going to click signing because we want to use this certificate for signing and encryption is automatically uh, checked and then certification. You can also set up a certificate for authentication. Um, I'm not going to do that now. That would be like if you have a um, uh, 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 security card, for example. And I am going to check valid until. And then this is where we set our valid until date. So I'm going to set it for um, until uh, 2020 to 20. Okay. Um, I like to expire my keys, but if you want to create a key that doesn't expire, just make sure you uncheck valid until. I'm going to set this to expire. Okay. And then click OK. Um, sorry, this is in Korean. Click OK. And then click Next. And then uh, you can see the name and email address is here. If we click Show All Details, then you'll see all of the the features, I guess, of the key that you're creating. So then we can create, uh, click create. Then it's going to ask you for your passphrase. Now you need to make this passphrase uh, fairly strong. If people get your key, then the passphrase is kind of the last line of defense um, for your, um, your key. And I didn't do that right, so yep, okay. Um, so normally if this wasn't a test system, I would have quality all the way up. Uh, I would use a much longer passphrase than this. Um, remember, you're probably generating these keys because you want to keep something uh, secret. So um, the the smaller your your key passphrase, the more likely it is that somebody can find that passphrase uh, faster. Okay. So then once we have our key, click OK, and then now it's generating um, our key pair. So it will create basically two. 
uh, keys, a public key and a private key. Public key is what we can share with other people and the private key is what we keep just to ourselves. Um, you can see a couple things. So once it's finished, key pair created successfully and the fingerprint of the key, this is the long fingerprint. Uh, many times we use a shorter fingerprint to identify. So for example, this key ID is 9E. Uh, 7AC21A, and you notice that that is the last few digits of the full fingerprint. Um, if you are sharing your key with somebody else, for example, if you put your key information on your business card, make sure you put the full fingerprint or uh, a larger chunk, I guess, of the fingerprint because uh, we could potentially generate this, this last few numbers. Um, if we were malicious. Okay. Next thing you might want to do is make a backup of your key pair. If this is going to be encrypting uh, anything important, you definitely want to backup um, if it's for something other than just testing. And then you can also send public key by email if you have an email client set up. Or we can upload the public key to a directory service. And what this will do is take your public key that can be shared with anyone post it on a public service, and then if I search for your name or your email address, then I can find your key um, that has been posted, and then I can use that to email uh, encrypted messages to you. Okay, um, I'm not going to do any of these right now, so I'm just going to click Finish. Okay, Now, uh, what we didn't have before, we didn't have a, any keys inside Cleopatra, but now we do. We have the key we just generated. We can see some information about it. And now I can do a couple of things. Um, I can start to encrypt or decrypt or sign different files um, with my key. I wonder if I have any files available. Okay, maybe I should uh, let me restore this. Okay, so I have this text file, and I think the text file just has yeah some Korean text. Okay, so I have this text file on my desktop, and let's say that I wanted to uh, encrypt this file so nobody else could get access to it without their password. Okay, so I can select my key. Um, and then I can either click on sign or encrypt or go to file and go to sign or encrypt and file. I'm going to click sign or encrypt button. Select desktop and the file that I want to sign or encrypt. Click open. And then I want to sign as uh, the key that we just generated. So notice I can select multiple keys if I have multiple private keys. Um, or encrypt, encrypt for me. Uh, and encrypt for others. If I have their um, uh, public key, then I can also encrypt the file for them. I'm going to uncheck encrypt for others. I just want to encrypt it for me. That's pretty much it. So I think I'm going to uh, uncheck sign. I'm just going to focus on encrypting right now. So encrypt, encrypt for me with my key. Okay, then that's all we have to select. Click encrypt and then encrypt and succeeded. And notice we get this test.txt gpg. If I close this. Now, if I uh, open up, uh, let me move this over here. If I try to double click on the GPG file, it's going to ask me for my password. If I give a wrong password, it says, hey, that's not the right password. If I cancel, then decryption canceled, make sure it's not, uh, make sure uh, it's the right file, basically. So if I double click on it again, then I can do, um, if I remember the password, <laughs> So I enter the pass <coughs> password and click OK. Decryption succeeded. And because I already entered the password, it saved the password. And now we have this test01.txt. If I open it up again, then I have all the original text that was already in there. Um, so that's pretty much it. This is a way that we can store um, files that are very important that we want to encrypt um, just for us or possibly for other people uh, using um, using their keys. So for example, if you had a, an office and you had everyone's keys uh, from the office, you could potentially um, uh, encrypt a file, upload it to, you know, uh, Google, Dropbox, something like that. And then anyone who had access to that file could download it and use their key to decrypt it. Um, so that's one way, one, uh, I guess, interesting feature. Normally what, what we do is um, uh, encrypt the file and then delete the old file. But if you just delete the old file, uh, uh, it's still possible that you could recover it. So make sure you're deleting it in some sort of secure way using a file shredder or something like that. Okay. So now I have my um, test01 text again. Now the next thing I want to show you is 
uh, signing or uh, uh, verifying, I guess, the data. So next I want to sign or encrypt again. I'm going to select text test 01.txt, click open. And then I want to sign as, but I don't want to encrypt, just sign. Okay. Um, and then click sign. Signing succeeded. Okay. So then now we have this uh, text.signature file. And if we open this up, it's going to be opened up automatically. Um, but uh, yeah, if I just double click on the signature, then basically what it does is checks the original test01.txt file, uh, or the original contents with uh, test01.txt.sig, and it's a valid signature uh, from this email address. And we can also see that the signature was created at the certain date and time, and the key that signed it. So for example, if you know my key, then you can verify whether I signed it or not, and you know that I signed it because I'm the only one with my private key and password. Yeah, so basically you can uh, sign things, and then whenever you give them to somebody else, then that person knows that it was actually you who gave the data or um, that you trust this data, basically. Okay. So uh, I opened up the signature just by double-clicking on the file. That's because Windows and Cleopatra detected that that's what I wanted to do. So instead of just double clicking on test01.txt sig and doing the verification, we can do decrypt verify and then go to the file that we're interested in uh, verifying, and uh, the, in this case, selecting the signature, click open. And then uh, we're verifying test.txt. Okay, so again, it verified. Now let's try something else. If we go in and uh, change some uh, text in the text file. So if we just add hello, okay, so file save, okay, so I've saved the hello into the same file. Um, so now the signature is not um, uh, representing the original data. So now if we go into decrypt and verify, and then desktop and test text signature, click open, then uh, it's an invalid signature because the original file contents have changed. Okay, so this is a way to let people know that you know this is the version that you okay or that you sign off on. It, that's why it's called a signature. Um, in this case, it's a bad signature because the data has changed, so we don't know what's changed. Um, yeah, so this is uh, encrypting uh, files to yourself or potentially colleagues and um, decrypting or verifying uh, data. The next thing, or I guess the final thing I'll talk about is if we right click on our key, we have two options. One is export and one is export secret keys um, So or publish on server. So for example, if you're trying to set up encryption in um, uh, encrypted emails in Facebook or something like that, or if you just want to send your public key to a friend, then you can right click on uh, your key, click export, and it will export your public key. It'll export your public key, and then you can give that then to your, your friend or Facebook or whoever it is, and they can send you encrypted emails. Now, whenever you receive the email, um, you will have to copy down the text, uh, the encrypted text, and then use uh, decrypt or verify to be able to um, uh, decrypt it. Okay. Um, and then the next thing is export secret keys. Now, you only want to do this Maybe if you're moving to a new computer, or if you want to make backup copies of your, your keys, um, but uh, do not let your secret key kind of get out of your possession. That's the important thing. Um, if your secret key is lost or you think it's been compromised or something like that, then you need to um, uh, revoke your public or your private key, the old private key, and then create a new one. Okay, um, so that's kind of a quick introduction into Cleopatra. I'm going to close this. Um, no. Okay. Um, so that's a quick introduction to Cleopatra. And just to kind of f finish this off, um, if you want to use uh, GPG command line, so for example, we can do the same commands as, uh, as on Linux. We can do GPG dash dash uh, list keys. And we only have one key right now. And you can see that it's the same key as before. Um, so we have this key that we trust. We see when it expires and we can use uh, GPG command line to uh, do any features, update the key, add additional uh, keys, sign other people's keys, things like that. So um, GPG for Win is very nice. Uh, Cleopatra is a really nice interface. If you're using Outlook or Thunderbird on Windows, you can also have um, uh, plugins that support 
uh, GPG keys for uh, Outlook or Thunderbird. So um, it's a really good way to kind of get started and um, uh, be able to play around with encrypting files, decrypting, signing, verifying uh, without getting too technical. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.